I do want to point out here, the silence is key in this scene. I think they did a really good job changing it. Because in the original, the song played as soon as the game started. That's about to play right now. It just it just fits so well. It'll just keep bringing it back, and then you got uh, James Sunderland's uh, face hidden with the shadows in his eyes. It's kind of like showing like a hollow shell, like an emptiness. You know, there's an emptiness inside him. And then this music, the new rendition that Akira Yamoka put into it, it's so beautiful, it's so dramatic, and it just kind of sh it's preparing you for the journey ahead for James Sunderland. It's not happy nor sad or maybe sad you know i don't know i mean the story this story is really sad but it's just it found a really good balance in between the two i don't know how to really explain it the graphics are phenomenal for this game i think it's still gonna be really good on ps5 they have from what i when i was reading the both 30 fps uh and for performance and 60 fps high high performance um but from what i heard that from the demo gameplay at 60 fps uh the ps5 didn't suffer any type of In my restless dreams um i see that issues town. silent hill you promised you'd take me there again someday but you never did the music well, oh i'm alone there they, they the, the music's in our it's, it's the same place. sound same same music same song but it, they added more to it it's just so good and the actress who plays Maria and Mary she's she's doing a great job too the, the delivery of the dialogue's a little I different a it's a, just a slightly different the name on the envelope said Mary my wife's name it's ridiculous. Couldn't possibly be true. Their voices are That's very weak, very um cumber cumbersome. Mary died of that damn disease three years ago. This is a heaviness to their voices, which. So then why am I looking for her? They they hit the tone. Stalin. Special place. What could she be? This whole town was our special place. Could Mary really be here? Is she really alive? I love this, like how they they made this new scene for in this me. game. It looks so good. The way he grips the handlebars, it's kind of like that anticipation, that tension, that anxiety. But like he's ready to go find her. He's hoping that you know she's alive, right? The thing I'm really excited about about this part of the game is like I'm gonna like run back behind the bathroom and like check everything out, see if you can go back in the bathroom. Cause in the original you could. Now I, I love how they kept the map in the car and the way he opens it up and how it kind of like moves when he opens it. It's it brings that realism that that immersion into the game. Like it's very realistic and the the sound effects in this game are sound effects and graphics are just top notch in this game right now. I'm telling you right now, like. It's so freaking good. You got Toluca Lake. I do want to say though, like his his footsteps are kind of they're kind of like a little too loud, but I mean it's kind of like I feel like you say it's like eye candy ear candy. I don't know what you say, but it sounds so good. Just each individual footstep and you can hear the sounds of the water and like the mud and the the twigs on the ground crunching the grass. It's very all very important to immersion in this game. And when I first saw this video, I thought they were going to show us like everything when you're walking down the path because this is like his initial walk to the Silent Hill town. They skip ahead in a, a couple seconds. Yep. So I'm guessing they're probably trying to like keep out some things that are going to happen during that path because in the original 
there were certain things that did happen. Not a lot, but I won't spoil it. This part here, you'll notice a change in the sound. That sound right there was sort of in the, that was in the original. It was the beginning when he was walking the path. So I don't know if it was actually a sound that was coming from the well or not. But that's one of the save points. That's the that's your first save point in the game, and that was the same from this from the original. And now we're making our way closer into town. I think we're like already past the um, graveyard. I don't remember seeing the Roadrunner sign in the original. Well, like, the fog in this game is so good. This is new. I do love that, how they kind of, like, give you another additional map. And it kind of, like, is... It's 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 more realistic in a sense because it's like a map like near where like the the town map is. It's pretty cool. Again, opening the map, and it shows you where you're at. And there's a little loading screen icon on the bottom right. If you guys didn't notice, which is really cool. Addition. I love this part right here. Not just because of the shoes, but his face, the face, the facial, <laughs> the facial expression he makes when seeing this figure. He's like, "What the fuck is that, dude?" And that's how like all of us are when we're first playing this game. Now, in the original play uh, playthrough of this, when they showed this part of the game, uh, a couple videos back, they didn't have this soundtrack playing, but I guess that's the soundtrack for the actual game, which I like. Pretty nice. The fact that he writes on the map, that's really cool. Viewing articles in real time, really cool. That part right there... I believe I'm not sure if that was in the original. I know that save point that area was in the original. Um, I don't remember the lying figure being there, but you'll see in a couple minutes, or a couple seconds, there will be like another lying figure, and I like how they're they're making it where you, you're not anticipating or you're not not knowing if it's gonna pop out at you, but or right up here you'll see a jump out, and they're I, I'm really excited to see more of that in the game. Cause it's gonna make it more more scary, you know. They did add more impact to the hits. He, there's you're still seeing clipping though, but it's not really a big deal. I don't think. I do like how they like they have like special on the sign for this area right here because it's kind of like your spe the special place. It's kind of like a lot of what Silent Hill 2 is known for is symbolism and a lot of like foreshadowing and just that little addition to it. I mean, uh, intentional or not, it, it everything kind of like ties together, which I love about this game and the remake. I mean, so good. And they brought the the beetles or the bugs back in the original they were a little bit more obnoxious because i think there was also like a glitchy too uh because from my memory i would I, when i first started playing i would run around the i ran around i never stuck around to find out what was going on you know find a uh stick around fuck and uh find out right um fuck around find out whatever the saying is <laughs> but like you, but the glitch was that the beetles, you wouldn't see the beetles, you just hear this like really annoying sound, which was like, it sounded like a bicycle wheel or some shit, but you wouldn't be able to see the bugs themselves. Oh. I think this is, this is a new part of the game. They said that their, uh, Bloober team said they're going to add, um, additional um, areas where you can like go inside, which is really cool for exploration. I'm guessing they'll add collectibles, stuff for trophies or for Steam, uh, Steam achievements, which is cool. That's what I'm excited about. Cause I'm gonna, I'm gonna 100% this game, no doubt. Like, it's gonna be so cool. Um. Oh. Another thing, the blood, the 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 border of the of the screen where when James is injured, um, I've been doing some digging on Twitter, 
and I actually was following up on certain replies because you can look at replies from people. So the director of Blooper actually confirmed with a with a fan's comment that there will be a plethora of settings that you can adjust and change. Um, a lot of these visuals have to do with people with hearing, um, like auditory and uh, eyesight impairments. So they're 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 enabling this for those who with uh, with disabilities, and so people can play this game if they have like hearing issues and can't see as well. You know, um, part of the reason why in the beginning at the initial save point there's a glowing aura of red around it, I believe that's a setting. Um, but the red blood border is definitely a setting. You can turn that off. They are also adding a 90s grain film that you can add on this game to overlay to make it look like the like a lot darker and more like the original, which I'm so excited for. This part right here I love because it's everyone's gonna talk everyone's talking about it. It's this quote. There was a hole here, it's gone now. It's like such a basic, simple like thing, but like it was in the original. I honestly don't know what type of meaning it has, but it was it was funny to me in the original. I don't know. There was another funny um, uh, quote that was in Silent Hill 1, and it, it was on one of the puzzles that you do on a piano, and it says on the keys, there there was some there is some blood are there, there are some blood there is some blood on some of the keys. It's just like the English doesn't sound right, but it's just the way it was written, and it just sounded funny. I don't know. It's just like small quirks like that that kind of like are iconic. I don't know. But this right here is a a puzzle. I kind of wish that they didn't show us, even though it's a pretty simple puzzle. But it looks pretty cool. Now, gluing a vinyl record. I don't. I don't think you can actually do that, but it's a video game. Who cares? It's a book. But this is some type of shit that I would I would do. Like, let's glue it. <laughs> we do get a good look at the uh, kind of like the in-game menu too when we're doing the uh, com combination, which is cool. I I do like how they don't show us the rest of that. If there's more to that puzzle, I hope there is, but it doesn't look like there was. It might may, may press a couple buttons to make it play, but whatever. Now this right here is interesting, uh, the dynamic weather system. I do, I did see on Twitter or on X that the developer or the lead developer did uh, say that, or uh, kind of hinted at it. He said, he kind of like, he, I think he responded with the emoji, but someone was asking about the dynamic weather and he said, and he like gave like a winky face or something. Um, so I think there's some type of dynamic weather, but it's also gonna play a role. That right there is really cool, by the way. Uh, the map with the lighting in that area just brings the immersion to a whole new level. Like it's harder to see in darker areas. Which in the original, if you if you didn't have your flashlight yet and you had a, a map to a new area, which happened in the original, you couldn't actually view the map. But in this one, it looks like you may be able to use the map. I do like the jump scare in this part. It was pretty cool. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know if they'll allow you to see the map if you don't have your flashlight. But it would add to that realism, you know? Even though someone would be crazy to, to fucking, like, pull out a map in the dark. It's like, bro, you're not gonna be able to see that shit. Again, sound effects, uh, hit, hit, collision, and all that stuff looks pretty good. Um, obviously finding the flashlight on, uh, the mannequin. That's iconic. I won't spoil it, but, um, just take a, take a good look at the, at the dress next time. And, uh, see if you can make a connection. But like I'm saying, everything ties into ties into each other in this game. I'm telling you guys, I'm playing this game. I got the early access. I'm gonna play this game with like zero hints. Like if they could turn that shit off, I'll turn it off. I'll, like I'm fully immersed in this game. I'm gonna go on hardest difficulty. So I've beaten the original multiple times on hard to get all the endings. Um, but I'm just going I'm just gonna go in blind because I don't I want to I want it to be as scary as possible. I thought this part here was uh 
I mean, it's cool and all, it's not necessary, but moving shit, because you don't do that in the original. Um, but it's it's modern games, like, they have stuff like that, so I don't see why it's a bad thing, to be honest. It adds more gameplay, because Silent Hill is not really known for, like, crazy amount of gameplay. It's more for story and puzzles and stuff, but I see what they're doing. They're, when they say tailored to modern audiences, everyone had a, had a fit about that, but I think that's what they mean by it, is they're, they're adding renditions of things from games that have, like, like that came out in, like, the past couple of years that, like, kind of, like, had these kind of, like, um, mechanics in them. So I think that's what they were going for, which, which is cool, because a lot of, like, your gameplay or your gamers to nowadays playing COD and Fortnite, like, pe people, like, have ADHD and shit, you know? You can't focus on one thing. Hey, wait. I think this was on the third floor of the apartments, but, yeah, that's pretty much the same. Damn it. It's just funny, because, like, James could have easily grabbed the, the key and, like, dude, this is, like, James not thinking. <laughs> Uh, the apartments look great, but I will tell you as we get further into the video, like, for me, I feel like the they've changed some of the layout. They changed the layout of the apartments because there's a lot of scenes where, like, you go outside and shit. You don't do that in the original. Like, they added a lot more to the to apartments. But I, will, I will say um, that I think the direction they're going, though, is good because you spend a lot of your time in the apartments. Um, and then there's another, there's a, there's the hospital um there's walk in the streets at, uh on the other in the other world um i think it's the uh there's a museum or the i forget what, what that place is called um but you go there and then the jail jail uh underworld scene um kind of like how you have the scenes the the three scenes for resident evil 4 where you have like the village the the castle the island this has like i think four or five scenes so it's kind of broken up into segments, but there's a lot more in this game. This is awesome. I, I think this is cool how they, they kept the, the cart with the gun. It's a, the same kind of like layout, which is funny because like, I was like, well, get this at first. I was like, is that a target? Is that a target grocery cart, bro? Like, who shoot, who's shooting guns and going to target? I like how he, he reloaded the gun, though. He reloaded that shit like Leon. Bro, like, at least knows how to load a gun up. And this part right there, that part right there was really cool. The sound almost seems the same from the from the original with the screaming man. And then James looking around. It, it kind of kept that like, quirkiness to it. The sound, music playing, that's, 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 that's the same. I won't spoil this part, but part of the symbolism, this represents something, but it's, uh, pretty, uh, pretty dark, to say the least. And no, that is not Mary. That is not Mary. She's alive, right? They changed the the pool layout, but this is cool. It seems uh, a lot more um, tactical in your approach to going and get what you need to get. There's something you have to get down there, but I won't I won't spoil that either. Um. It's the the clock. Oh, I just noticed it. I I, I didn't I didn't see it's the first time I played play through. But if you saw like the previous right there on the left hand side, yeah, it's part of the puzzle for the clock. But the one thing I don't like about this like whole gameplay video is that they're kind of like giving away the kind of like how you're supposed to solve these puzzles. But there are other puzzles they haven't shown. So like this right here is new. I haven't seen this before.
But yeah, like, see how they go? He's going outside. Like, that wasn't in the original. There was a scene where he jumped, like, he jumps out to another side of the apartments, but. And they added it to this because, uh, that was one of the gameplays. This right here creeped me out the first time I saw it. That's, that's different. It's probably the scariest scene I've seen in the, the demo or in all the gameplays I've seen so far. It just, the game looks so, so fucking good. Yeah, I, I don't really like, I mean, that's like the OG sound of getting the health stuff, but I don't, I don't, I don't know. I hope you can turn that setting off because I don't like seeing that. I feel like having to remember how many syringes and, and health things I have, it's going to be a lot more fun. But yeah, those, those bugs in the original, dude, those things would fuck you up. Uh, in, in Silent, uh, I, I will say in Silent Hill 1, they fucked you up even more, but in Silent Hill 2, like, they still are annoying because you couldn't really see them on the ground based on the fixed camera angles. It was kind of hard to see them. You'd have to, like, spam your, your melee button to kill them, to stomp on them. But that's the one thing they changed in this game, though. I think the, the stomping ability doesn't have, like, it's not auto-kill in this game, I, in this in the remake. In the original, the when you would stomp, if you just knock down any, any monster, especially, like, the lion figures, if you hit them twice and knock them down, they'll get back up if you don't hit them again. But if you stomp on them after knocking them down, it's automatic death. And, the, like, you know that they're dead when the music start, stops playing. But in this game, it looks like there's they could still be alive. It's based on health. Another thing I want to point out is the line figures, right? So this line figure has, like, what looks like glass sticking out or rock sticking out of it. I wonder if Bloober is making, like, they say same types of enemies, but a lot more. I wonder if they're making those, the ones that look different, a little bit more powerful. Kind of like how they did for the, um, those, uh, things in the, in Resident Evil 4, I forget what they're called. The, those, like, those ugly, creepy looking, like, things that wiggle around and shit. I forget what they, they called them. But, like, how they had spikes on one of them, it was more powerful. It looks like that was like another type of puzzle. See how you you're walking down and jumping and jumping through windows? That's new. Oh, it's off snow. But I do like how they're going. They're kind of changing it up a little bit, which is this is what a remake is about. It's not about keeping it one to one. You got to add some stuff. You know, make it refreshing for new for old old comers and then refreshing. You know. This is the part where you get the, the clock handle inside of a toilet, which is, this is pretty much this, this is pretty much the same from the original. Uh, of course, James doesn't care. He's going to do it anyways. <laughs> and it had the fucking shit effect to his hand. It's so great. Oh my God. That's wild, bro. That, that part creeped me out, too, when I first played. This is the butterfly room. Or the moth, whatever. Um, I honestly don't... I didn't really understand this in the original. Um, obviously, you have the hole in the wall. I won't spoil that. But the room is different. I think in the original, you go into an apartment house, and then, like, you go into another room, and you would... You would it was, like, glowing red with green on the wall. A little bit different. So they changed the area right here because it's right, right, right before you go into fight Pyramid Head. I do like how they put S carved onto the door, like Sunderland for James Sunderland. That's what I'm guessing it is, but that there's a connection on Pyramid Head with James. Now this, and I know like in the original, they had like a sexual scene with Pyramid Head and the, the lying figure or the doll. But in this, it looks like they left it out. I think that might be, they might have a setting where like, because of like disturbing images and all that, they might have a setting to turn it off. Like they did in the Call of Duty games. 
or a Call of Duty, like the, the no Russian mission kind of shit. So it might be like that. I don't know. This is just my thoughts. But if, even if they leave it out, that's fine too. But I will say this boss fight is pretty cool. I think that some of the dodging is a little off, but it doesn't really matter. To be honest, I think it's going to be fun either way. Uh, Pyramid Head looks badass in this scene right here. And him crushing like objects and stuff, breaking them, really cool. Like right there, like he's like James should have gotten hit, but it's fine. So this right here. So notice how rain starts coming down, the music starts picking up. I wonder if there's two phases of Pyramid Head. But from what I see, he's doing the same attacks. He's not I don't think he's moving much faster. Maybe he's more aggressive. But it's definitely it's the music, everything is pumped up to another level. It might be where he grips you. That might be his second phase. But in the original, it was one phase. And I think you had to do a certain amount of damage to him to beat him. Even though you weren't doing damage, even if you shot him in the head, it's 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 Silent Hill. Even if you shot him in the, his metal head, he, you're still doing damage. I don't know if they're doing it the same here, too. It looks like it. Let's part here where he busts the door open. Badass. Boom. Yeah, that's... And then James with his face like, what the fuck is... What am I seeing, man? Yeah. But yeah, that's like... That's what I, that were my thoughts on the gameplay video. Um, but yeah, some of the updates I, I had provided earlier about like how there's gonna be multiple settings, stuff like that. I think, um, well, I know based off of what the Blue Team's developer had said was that there will be, he also confirmed that there's gonna be, I think the original six or five or six endings that they had in the original. Um, they're, they're including those in there. As well as, uh, I think they're going to do a couple um, of their own renditions of the endings. So, um, I would say between 6 to 8 to not, maybe 9 possible endings to this game. So, you're going to be playing through this game more than once. Um, for for an initial playthrough with a little bit of exploring and all that stuff, uh, it's like between 18 and 20 hours. So I'm looking, you're looking at 20 plus hours for your first playthrough if you're going to be searching around looking for everything, especially if you're playing on hard difficulty. Um, for vets, maybe 15 to 20 hours, uh, maybe even smaller, uh, a lower number based on if, if people are trying to like, just like get to the end as fast as possible, because some, some gamers will do that. They just want to get through the story and that's it. Um, but with multiple endings, so you have like nine endings, like you're looking at 50 plus hours uh, in this game. If you want to get like a completionist, um, I, that that might be like a little bit too much, but I would maybe not fifty. I would say maybe maybe thirty plus hours. Um, so you're getting a good amount of gameplay out of this remake, and uh, especially if you're a first time, welcome to the community. Uh, you know, uh, people can be pretty harsh in this community, but it looks like it's everyone's liking it uh, now, especially with the comments I've been seeing. Um, like I said, from uh, a couple videos ago, you know, remain positive, uh, have hope for Bluebird, but I get people being, are holding back. Uh, but now that they're starting to get the trust of the community back and all that stuff, I think that's a really good step forward. Uh, and I'm really excited for this. Um, game comes out October 8th. Uh, if you're Eastern Standard Time like me, uh, it'll come out at 12 a.m. on the 8th. Uh, if you get the early access 48 hour, it's going to come out on the 6th at 12 a.m. I'll be playing on the 6th. I won't be playing at 12 a.m. I like my sleep. But I will be waking up, making myself some pumpkin spice latte, you know, and uh, some cookies. And I'm going to be playing this game. It's going to be a great uh, uh, day to play some Silent Hill and be in a spooky environment slash, you know, world again, once again. So... Um, but yeah, no, I hope you guys are ex just as excited as I am. I'm really, I'm really excited for this game. I can't wait for it to come out. And if you like this video, please uh, like and subscribe, comment, leave comments. I love responding to comments. 
Uh, if you didn't like the video, you can go ahead and comment anyways. I don't, I don't really care. Um, but if you like this video, uh, please share it and, uh, and stay tuned for more. Um, I may make YouTube videos from, uh, pl like my playthrough. I just have to get a capture card cause I got it for the PlayStation five. I, I really don't want to play on PC. Um, cause I, I want to be, I want to play in controller either way. And it, it doesn't, it doesn't really make sense unless I really care about the whole like graphics thing, but I think it'll look good on P PS five. Um, and I'm plus I got the deluxe, so I get that. The bunny, the Robbie the Rabbit head. You know, that's not really me much. I mean, I think it's pretty cool though. Uh, but yeah. Anyways, I'm just rambling. Um, but yeah. Have a great day. Thank you for coming by. Uh, if you want to see any other videos, uh, let me know what you want to see. Um, uh, maybe we can we can make something happen. All right. Anyways, peace out.